In this video, I'm going to be talking about the Soviet motorized infantrymen, specifically the Motorstrelki, as they're called. By no means this is going to be an in-depth look, but I decided might as well do a video talking about the kit and equipment because you guys seem to like it so much. So without further ado, let's get started, shall we? When it comes to the main uniform, it's going to be the OBR-69 or OBR-69-73 uniform, and that is going to be the most basic Soviet kit that you can get. When it comes to the headwear, the Pilotka is a callback to the Red Army, being the primary headwear during the Great Patriotic War. It continued its service up until the end of the Soviet Union. It is a very simple designed sight cap, which has ear flaps, which are rarely used. Um, especially during World War II, you only see it being undone by prisoners of war. By the Cold War period, there is no indication that the headwear ever has its ear flaps down. One interesting thing about Soviet headwear is you usually carry your sewing kit inside of your hats. So that's, this could be either your Rushanka or Pilotka or the Afghanka cap, which I have replicated here with a little sewing needle and thread. Depending on the year, the primary ballistic protection you see is either the SSH-60 or the 68 helmet. But some units may be issued the SSH-40 depending on the year as well. I opted for an SSH-68 to properly replicate a well-equipped Soviet motorized infantryman. The design of the SSH-68 is pretty much similar to the SSH-40 and the SSH-60 helmets that preceded it. However, it does have a larger shape with a higher degree slope at the front. It kind of looks like a lemon, if you ask me. When it comes to the uniform, it's the infamous, or the famous, whatever you want to call it, OBR-69-73 uniform. When it was first introduced, the shoulder straps or the shoulder boards did not have the ciphers. But in 1973, those ciphers were added, thus making the new uniform. The design is quite different than the earlier Gimnostyrka uniforms, simply because of the improvements of the atomic age, where you have to have soldiers who are able to quickly change their uniforms if there is a chemical attack. And Gimnostyrka being a pullover shirt type of uniform had some difficulties adjusting for speed and changeability in a way. Therefore, you have this new designed uniform, which is still, if you ask me, an older design, but a nice looking five button front uniform, which can be easily opened up to be changed into another uniform as quickly as possible. The trousers or the breeches are also known as Gallife, or the earlier models known as Shalavari are quite different than the World War II or the immediate post-war era ones, being tighter around the body and have a less of a bulk when it comes to the, the, the actual shape. And when it comes to footwear, the Soviet Union, following its military culture of the Tsarist period, continued its use of jackboots or sapogi. I have an original 1970s, 1980s example here with tractor soles. Other sole examples include the Kopecky or the dotted sole variant known by Western collectors, which is quite similar to the World War II ones. These boots can be made either from Kerza, which is imitation leather, canvas impregnated with rubber, uh, or actual leather. The kit wouldn't be complete without the proper fighting equipment you see on me currently, which is also known as the RPS load bearing system. So around 1958, the first pattern was introduced and it rarely changed up until the 1980s. It consists of a central belt with a grenade pouch, canteen, shovel carrier, shovel, and a magazine pouch supported by a Y-strap system which ca also carries the plush palatka rain cape or the shelter half of the Soviet soldier. One thing that I missed is also included on the belt is a bayonet which attaches to your AK rifle. 
Depending on the unit or year, or really the exercise that uh, the kit is in use, the belt buckle seems to change a lot since you have a dress belt along with a field belt, which supposed to be used in the field. However, in many photographs, it seems, like, it seems to me that Soviet soldiers still opted for the brass buckles. I actually have an example of a tarnished buckle to kind of simulate a field look on my uniform. However, I also have a dress belt. The dress belt compared to the field belt is made with a leather strap and a shinier brass buckle. Field belts include sometimes the painted buckles or the simple galvanized steel buckles. However, this obviously changes depending on the unit, the regiment, and the time of year we're talking about, because it's really confusing how these belts are supposed to be used, whereas nobody actually knows why, in certain cases, Soviet soldiers opted for brass buckles instead of the field ones. The primary firearm used by the Soviet motorized infantrymen is the AK-74 assault rifle. Depending on the unit or the regiment, you can see earlier AKMs or even AK variants of the 47 line. But I opted for a standard mid to late 70s look with a newly issued AK-74 or even early 80s. My example is an airsoft replica. It's a D-Boys AK-74. I have modified the magazine to remove the ribs so that it can closely replicate the look of a Bakelite magazine without the ribs, but there are still some ribs showing, I'm afraid. I will be Fakelighting it with wood varnish to better simulate the look. And all I can say is a good replica. It is a good replica and it does the job of my kit. Another important equipment piece that is sometimes lacking when it comes to period photographs, aside from exercises, is the gas mask bag along with the gas mask. The RHM-41 gas mask, which is pretty much the same style gas mask used in the early 1940s up until the 80s with the, the, the new gas mask coming, it did not change at all. It is a, basically the copy of the Second World War model with some minor updates. The gas mask kit includes the gas mask, the gas mask hose, along with the filter, and some extra anti-fogging utensils. I really hope that you enjoyed this video, and if you have any questions regarding my kit and where I got them, please do ask on the comments below. Like and subscribe. Have a nice day, guys.